All right. Good morning, students, and welcome to your virtual farm tour. We have farmer Doug here. We're excited to get started, but before we jump in, I just want to give you a few tips to have the best experience possible. Tip number one, make us full screen. You'll be able to see the most views of the farm that way. Tip number two, make sure to use the question and answer uh, option or box on Zoom if you're joining us there. If you're on YouTube, you just get to experience the questions. And if you're on Facebook, you can use the comment section. Tip number three, we are going to get to as many questions as possible. If I don't answer your question right away, I promise it's because I've seen it. But I know that it's coming up on the next part of our farm tour. So just be patient. We're going to do our best to answer all of your questions. Welcome to the farm. We're in the calf farm. Doug, tell us a little bit about the farm. All right. Well, welcome, everybody. Uh, this is Zancroft Dairy. We're here in Pennsylvania. It's a beautiful spring, sunny day. Uh, this farm has been in my family since 1934. Uh, I'm the third generation. My brother and I are here to, uh, to run the dairy. Uh, thanks for tuning in today. Awesome. Awesome. Okay. So we're going to jump right in and learn a little bit about these calves that we're seeing. So how old are these calves? What are they doing here? What perkins do they serve on the farm? Yeah. So uh, these are all our female calves. They're anywhere from just a few days old up to uh, two, three months old in this barn. Uh, but these calves are the future of our herd. So they'll be the, the next generation of milking cows when they get to about two years, 24 months old, that's when they will have a calf themselves and start producing milk. Got it. Got it. Okay. Now these calves look pretty big. How much do they weigh? Yeah. So when a calf's born, it usually weighs somewhere between 80, 90, hundred pounds. Uh, they're pretty big. They're wow. full. Okay. Um, they are pretty big animals. That's pretty crazy. So we've got a calf right behind us here. Now, what is what are your calves primarily eating? What are you feeding your calves? Uh, yeah, so these calves get milk uh, twice a day, a total of about eight quarts of milk each day. Okay. Uh, they also have a, a grain available to them and fresh water at all times. Cool. We'll show you a little bit. So this is the grain that they're eating. So what's included in that, Doug? What, what's in there to help feed them and keep them going? Yeah, so you might see a little bit of corn in there, uh, a lot of protein and energy ingredients. Uh, they it gets rolled into like a pellet uh, to help keep it all together and helps the calf digest it a little more. But every uh, every nutrient they need for, for growth, they're going to end up uh, gaining about two pounds a day over the course of their time in here. Oh, my gosh. Okay, so born at 80 to 90 pounds, gaining two pounds a day. How big do we want them to get? Yeah, so a, a mature cow can weigh upwards of 1,500, 2,000 pounds. Got it. Got it. Now we're seeing on the cow cam too. It looks like we have a couple different colors of cows here. Do you have different breeds on the farm? Yeah, we do. Uh, so the black and white cow that a lot of you might be familiar with is the Holstein breed. Uh, that's the predominant breed here, but we also have some brown Swiss. So that uh, brown grayish looking calf okay. is a, a, she's in the brown Swiss breed. And we also have some red and white Holsteins that are just red instead of black. Got it. Got it. Okay. So you got a few different breeds here going on. That makes sense. Now I know too, on some of the calves that we've seen, they have some pretty cool earrings going on. What are those ear tags actually for on these calves? Yeah. So each cow uh, has a name and a number and her number is there on her tag. Uh, that helps us out to keep track of all the animals. Uh, it's a unique number. So there's no duplicates and that way we can uh, keep records of each animal in the computer and they're easy to read so then we're working with the animals we can uh, easily identify them oh okay that makes a lot of sense so basically kind of like a driver's license keeping sure. track of all these critters we did have a couple students ask how many calves are born every day here on the farm if you said that you've got 200 mature ants yeah so uh some days there might not be any but most days there is uh, at least one we've had as many as four or five in one day uh, that keeps us moving to to get all those calves uh, dried off and cleaned up and gotcha. happy. Now, do you have a full-time person who just manages your calves, or how does that work? Uh, so my sister-in-law, Katie, is in charge of the calves. Uh, okay. This barn is, is her territory. She uh, keeps this place uh, spick and span and, and the calves growing healthily and, and happy. 
Got it. Got it. That makes sense. Now, how many people work here on the farm total? Uh, yeah, we have two full-time guys that primarily are, are doing milking okay. up in the parlor. And then we also have uh, five or six part-time people, a lot of, a lot of high school age kids like, like you folks joining so us here. Uh, you know, it's a, it's a good after school job or weekend job. Uh, you're here for a few hours of time and then you're out of here. But Got it. Yeah. We have, uh, any one time, seven or eight people plus my brother and I. Okay. That makes a lot of sense. A lot of, a lot of people helping out to make it, uh, make the farm go round. That makes a lot of sense. Okay. Another question that we had coming in from uh, some of these students is what are we thinking that they're bedded on? So, and they seem to be living in groups. Do they stay this way for the rest of their life? Uh, yeah. So the bedding is uh, right now, a lot of straw coming okay. out of the winter here. Straw helps keep the, uh, the calves a little warmer. You know, they can use their body heat and, and nestle down in there when it's cold out. But we also use wood shavings uh, the rest of the year. Uh, that's a good dry, keeps things dry in their pen and clean. Oh, okay. Uh, but yeah, you, you'll see calves in groups of four or five uh, in this barn, and they'll eventually move into a little bigger groups, but they'll be with, with these same calves for most of their lives, really. Oh, wow. Okay. So they kind of stay together almost like school, like you stay with your grade. Yeah, it's definitely a social group. Got it. Now, another question we had is, you mentioned that these are all girl calves. What happens, I'm sure you have boy calves. Where do they go? Yeah, so the the bull calves or, or boy calves, mm -hmm. uh, obviously they don't get milk, so they'll get sold to another farm. Uh, you know, at just a few days of age, they'll go to a farm that specializes in raising uh, bull calves, and they'll, they'll go into the beef industry. Okay, so now when your calves are being raised here, how much do you want them to grow each day? I mean, I know humans and our human biology, we grow pretty slowly. How fast do these calves grow? Yeah, these calves will, I mean, they'll end up eating four or five pounds of feed. So that translates into about two pounds of growth of body weight each day. Oh my gosh. Okay, so really, really quickly, they're getting right after it. Now, another question we had was, when does a, ca a calf become a cow? How does that work? What age is that? So when does adulthood start? Yeah, so uh, a calf, as she grows into more like an adolescent or teenager age, she'd be considered a heifer. And then at 24 months or two years old, she'll have a calf of her own. And that's when she's uh, a milk cow. Okay. Mature two years cow. old, 24 months. That's when she's turning into an adult. Right. Got it. Got it. That makes a lot of sense. Okay. Now, students. We've gone through a bunch of how these calves are raised. I think it's time to go see the next part of the farm. But before we do, we want you guys to take a quick break and take a quiz for us. So go ahead, grab, grab the knowledge that we just gave you, take your quiz, and we'll meet you at the cow barn next.
All right, students. I'm pretty sure you got all those questions correct. So while you guys were working on your quiz, we have made it over to the cow barn. So Doug, remind us again, how many calves living in, or excuse me, how many cows living in this barn and about how old are these animals? Yeah, so these are our, our milking cows. There's about 240 in this barn. Uh, these cows are anywhere from two years up to, we've got some around 10 years old in here. Okay, great. So these are our adult animals, two years to 10 years. Now we're seeing some of them come through on the cow cam. They look big. How big are these animals? Yeah, so uh, a full grown cow could weigh anywhere from 1,500, even up to 2,000 pounds. Oh, wow. Okay, very cool. Now we're seeing lots of the Holsteins as you shared with us, the black and white cows out there. And we're also seeing that a lot of these animals look like they're laying down and relaxing. So tell us a little bit about the barn here and how they're designed to keep these cows comfortable. Yeah, so this is called a free stall barn. Uh, you can see the cows have access to stalls there to lay down individually. Uh, they can get up and go eat, drink as they please, move around as they want. Uh, we want the cows laying down from 12 to 14 hours a day. Uh, you know, the majority of their day is actually spent resting. Uh, that all helps self-production and keeping the cow comfortable. Uh, you might be able to see or hear the fans are running today. Uh, those start up automatically. We have sensors that check humidity, the air temperature, wind speed. Uh, everything out here is kind of automatically controlled for ventilation. Uh, the sides of the barn are actually like a curtain that can go up and down also based on those parameters. Uh, cows actually like things a little cooler than we do. So 70, 80 degrees, eh, a cow's gonna start feeling pretty warm when it gets to that temperature. Uh, so we don't need to heat this. We don't have air conditioning, but we do have fans and misters that'll actually uh, kind of, it's like a shower that'll put cold water on the cows when it gets really hot out. Oh, wow. That's pretty neat. So these cows look like they're just enjoying the buffet. So can you tell us a little bit about what types of feed they eat? Yeah, so the feed is called a PMR. That stands for total mixed ration. So all the nutrients and feed it in there, uh, it's all the ingredients that a cow needs to produce a lot of milk and stay healthy. Uh, we have six or seven different ingredients in there. It's almost like a salad or a casserole where everything gets blended together kind of in a, in a mix. And I can show you here some of the ingredients we put into that. Yeah, very cool. Definitely show us. So right here we have hay. Uh, that's a, a grass that's been mowed and dried down so that it can be baled. Along with what we have here is called so this is the whole plant that's popped up, up uh, in fall is when we, we harvest this. And then it, it uh, without light or oxygen, and it goes through the fermentation process. That way it stays fresh uh, all year round because obviously we need feed every day. The cows get milked every day. There's no uh, break period for them. We need to have fresh feed all year. And the other forage that goes into this this is called haylage. Uh, this comes from a crop like rye or wheat uh, that's been, again, chopped up and fermented and that we can store here on the farm. And then we have some more uh, concentrated ingredients. So you guys can probably see this is corn. Uh, some of the corn is combined for the grain only. Uh, and that's stored here also on the farm. Uh, this will get ground up and incorporated into the mix. And then we have a couple uh, ingredients that we purchase that are high in protein and energy and also have all the vitamins and minerals that the cows need, uh, things that we can grow here. We purchase this feed. Uh, that makes up about 5 to 10% of the mix. Everything else we try to grow here on the farm. Wow, very cool. So it seems like there's a lot of science that goes into feeding these cows. Yeah, it's it's a very uh, high level of nutrition, probably better than a lot of people as far as being balanced and energy correct. 
that's fabulous. So we have a couple questions coming in, uh, which one of them was actually asking about growing the crops themselves. What percentage are you growing yourself? And then what types of uh, environmental sustainable practices are you using to grow those crops? Yeah, so uh, here in Pennsylvania, with our, our climate, we're able to grow two crops per year off of each acre. So that rye or wheat that I was talking about, that actually gets planted in the fall, uh, and then we harvest it in the spring, and then right after that, we'll go in and plant corn, and then the corn will be harvested in the fall. So it's called double cropping. We can get uh, twice the nutrients off each acre, Another nice thing about that rye or wheat crop is it's growing and it's putting down roots in wintertime. That way we're conserving soil. Uh, it's not running off and uh, we're not, you know, releasing uh, carbon into the atmosphere. We're really keeping the soil here on the farm where we want it for growing our crops. And also the manure that the cows produce gets incorporated back onto the fields for fertilizer. So it's really uh, one big cycle of nutrients that we're not, you know, producing excess uh, nitrogen and so forth. It all stays here, gets used for a purpose uh, to be, you know, stay sustainable in producing milk. Got it. Wow. A lot of science, a lot of math, a lot of technology sounds like it's being used. That's really, really interesting. So obviously we're seeing these cows are housed inside, they're under sand. Um, what happens with all of this lovely manure that we're seeing and how much manure does the cow produce every day? Yeah, so I'm not sure the exact weight, but it's you know somewhere around 40, 50 pounds probably of manure. Uh, and that all gets collected in a waste uh, pit, pit lagoon, we call it. Uh, that way it can get stored for six months at a time and then applied onto the fields as fertilizer when we need it, uh, both in the spring and the fall. So that's where uh, the manure ends up. And this barn actually uses uh, water from the manure to flush these alleys. So like where the cows stand, that gets flushed. Uh, that's how we collect the manure. And it, it's all recycled water. You know, we're not bringing in any fresh water to do that. It's all, a, again, it's a, it's a loop and it's a, a cycle of how we uh, handle nutrients here. Got it. So you mentioned to us before um, that every cow has to have a calf to produce milk. Right. Now, on top of that, we have students asking, do you keep uh, any bulls on the farm? Uh, we do not. Uh, the breeding is done artificially so we don't keep uh bulls around there's just too much unpredictability with them it's not safe for us or our employees so we don't keep any bulls there got it that makes a lot of sense uh now about how long do these cows spend resting every day so we see them they're kind of laying in beds hanging out what's in those beds yeah so the cow's beds are filled with sand uh, it's kind of like a day at the beach for them every day. Uh, sand is inorganic, so it doesn't support uh, microbial bacteria growth. And uh, the other thing is it's really comfortable uh, for a cow. There's about 10 to 12 inches uh, like, a, like a bed in there that they lay on. That does sound pretty comfortable. Now, we had some of our students asking, how old are some of your oldest cows? Uh, we have a couple couple old girls that are over 10 years old that's getting to be you know definitely mature age uh certainly some of them are they could have a granddaughter milking here or even a great granddaughter okay okay that's pretty cool now our calves or, or sorry rather our cows having a calf every single year uh generally yeah we, we shoot for around every 13 months uh for that cow to have a calf Okay, okay. So it looks like these cows, most of them are just laying down. Some of them are getting up to go be milk. What does their day look like? How do they spend their time all day? Yeah, so our cows are milked three times a day, uh, 4 o'clock, 11.30, and 7 at night. So at those times, they'll 
go over to our milking parlor that you'll see in a little bit. Uh, but, you know, the rest of the time, they're coming back here to eat, lay down. Uh, we do feed them, run fresh feed out to them twice a day. But they'll actually have like seven or eight meals where they'll just come up when they want to eat. Got it. Big snackers. That's right. All That's night right. buffet. Perfect. Okay, I think it's time, students. I think you're ready to jump in and do your next quiz on the cow section. And I think we're ready to show you the parlor. So you guys do your quiz, and we'll meet you right back here for showing you the parlor. Okay, students, I hope you've had a chance to answer all those questions. I'm sure you did great. We have made it to our last stop on the farm floor. And I'll be at probably the most important stop, right? This is where the magic happens. So we brought you students over to the milking parlor. So Doug, tell us a little bit about what we're seeing here. How many cows are we milking? What's going on? Uh, yeah, so this parlor, is considered a double 12. So that means there's 12 cows on each side at any one time. Uh, 12 plus 12, we can put 24 in here total. Uh, this parlor is considered a parallel parlor because the cows stand uh, side by side in a parallel line. And we usually have two people in here doing the milking. Uh, like I said, we milk three times a day. Uh, it takes around three hours total each each of those milking shifts uh the cow herself she only is going to spend about 10 minutes in here uh and about it takes about five minutes for the machine to actually uh remove the milk from each cow so 
we try to get them in and out of here as quickly as possible so they can get back to doing what they want to do over in the barn. Got it. Okay, so basically these cows only have to work for like 15 minutes a day. That's what I'm hearing. Yeah, hey, it's uh, not a bad life. Perfect. So now we had someone ask, how do the cows know when and where to be milked? Um, so are you going to get them or are they saying, hey, let me in, I'm ready? Yeah, so one person will really more or less open the gates uh, from the pen and a lot of them will start making their way over here because they want to get milk. Uh, Got and it. You end up uh, just kind of hurting them. They, they are a herd. They like to be in a group, but uh, they'll all come over into an area called the holding area uh, where you can fit about 100 at a time. So as the first few are milk, they'll leave and then another side of 12 will come in. Uh, but really they're, they're only in the parlor area at most one hour at a time. Well, most of them are a lot less than that. Got it. So we're seeing the milking process get started here. Share a little bit with us about what that process actually looks like. So what are we seeing? Yeah, so the, the guys are using a, a brush tool called a teat scrubber. Uh, so that tool cleans the teat. It also dispenses a, a cleaning solution, make sure there's no bacteria on there before we apply the milking machine itself. Uh, they'll go down and do six cows at a time. Uh, that brush, like I said, cleans the teeth, also dries them off and stimulates the cow that she's ready to milk. Uh, he'll then go back and uh, attach the milking unit six at a time. Uh, from there, the unit will be removed itself. When the milk flow drops to a certain uh, level, there's sensors that will pull the milker off the cow when she's done. Got it. So we're seeing now on CowCam 2 that milk flowing through from the machine through the tubes. Now, some of our students are asking, is this comfortable? What does it kind of feel like for a cow to be milk? Yeah, so the, the machine itself is using vacuum and uh, what's called pulsation. So there's not a constant flow on each teat. It, it kind of mimics how your hand or, or a calf would nurse at a cow uh, to gently remove the milk and then from there pipelines uh, gravity flow over to our milk room where the milk goes through another filter just to make sure it's totally clean and then it's cooled. Uh, we have a what's called a plate cooler that uses cold water and surface area to chill that milk from you know it's like 100 degrees in the cow. Uh, the plate cooler will take it down to a little under 70 right away and then from there, it goes into our storage milk tank where refrigeration will cool that milk to under 40 degrees, 36, 37 degrees uh, within an hour. Got it. Got it. Okay. That makes a lot of sense. So that milk's cooled right off. Now, I'm, I know it goes from the farm to the store pretty quickly. Um, what is most of your milk going to make? Is it going to make cheese? Is it going to make the jugs we see in the grocery store? Yeah, uh, most of our milk here in Pennsylvania goes for fluid consumption. We are fairly close to a lot of big cities, you know, Philadelphia, New York, the East Coast here. So the most economic uh, way to handle our milk is, is to put it in jugs and pints, and it goes for consumption that way. Uh, there is some that could go for cheese or yogurt or ice cream production. Um, but, you know, the most efficient use for us is for fluid consumption. That's where you'll you'll find our milk at the store in the gallons. Got it. Got it. Okay, that makes a lot of sense. Now, one of the other questions that we had coming in is some of our students saw on some of the cows as they came in and even the cows down waiting, those little red ear tags. Can you tell us what do those ear tags do and how do they connect to the parlor here? Yeah, those tags are, are kind of like a Fitbit. So they track a lot of movement activity of the cow. Uh, they can tell, you know, just from the movement of her ear, how much she's spending, uh, how much time a day she's spending eating, how much of time she's resting. It can check her temperature. So anything uh, that we need to keep cow healthy, uh, all those uh, 
things we measure can be tracked by those tags. Uh, I can pull that up on my phone at any time. It'll flag a cow if she's sick, and that way we can get to her sooner, as soon as possible, if we need to give her extra attention. Got it, got it. Okay, so we have some students asking, you mentioned when a cow's not feeling well. Can you share with us about how you use maybe antibiotics to help them get healthy, and then what that means ultimately for the male? Sure. So the only time that we would use an antibiotic is if a cow is sick. Uh, if, if a cow gets pneumonia or maybe uh, what's called mastitis in the udder, but that milk has to be separated. We can't sell that. There's very fine tests that check for antibiotics in milk. Uh, so you can rest assured that there's no antibiotics in the milk you're consuming because it has to be separated here on the farm before it ever hits the shelf for sure. Okay, so that makes sense. So basically, there's a bunch of different protocols in place. First of all, we're only using the antibiotics when a cow absolutely needs it. And then right. on top of that, it would never make it into a tank, never make it onto a shelf. Right. Got Every it. tank or load of milk gets checked. So there's no getting around that. Got it. That makes a lot of sense. Now, in the realm of uh, sort of that, we did have a student asking us when they saw the feed and the crops about utilizing pesticides to help limit, you know, weeds and whatnot in the crops. Um, so how are you guys managing that to help keep also then what these cows are eating, keep that safe and healthy? Yeah, so uh, we'll use pesticides in springtime to kill any weeds in the fields before we plant a crop. Uh, that way the crop can take over growing in a nice clean seed bed. Uh, weeds, weeds aren't very nutritious. We don't want them in the feeds. So we'll use pesticides for weed control uh, as needed. Okay, got it. That makes a lot of sense. So now, how much milk is each cow producing on the farm here? Yeah, so right now our cows are averaging over 90 pounds of milk a day. Uh, we kind of track milk by weight rather than volume, but that translates to uh, over 10 gallons per cow each day. Got it. Okay, so 10 gallons per cow. We students can do the math. Remind our students, Doug, how many cows milking each day? Yeah, uh, there's around 240 getting milk. All right, there you have it, folks. 10 gallons times 240 cows every day. That is a lot of gallons of milk making it off the farm here to the grocery store. So we did have another student ask us um, about if the cows go outside or do they ever escape the barn? <laughs> uh, well, if somebody doesn't close the gate properly, they can go on a little jaunt. But, uh, you know, our cows get uh, a vacation of about two months each year where they're dried off, where they're not milking. So at that point, they get pasture access uh they're down in a in a different barn at that time that's kind of like their break before they have another calf uh okay. you know for about two months got it got it okay that makes a lot of sense now on top of that uh one other question that we had coming in from students is why is milk pasteurized now you're not doing that pasteurization here at the farm but maybe you can share with us yeah, so pasteurization is, uh, you know, pretty well, well known uh, process of heating the milk to kill bacteria. Uh, there's, you know, naturally occurring bacteria in milk, so that's just a, a safeguard to ensure that product's safe for consumption and it'll last on the shelf for a good long while. Got it. So what you've shared with us so far too, Doug, it sounds like there's a lot of regulation in place, um, both from the FDA, from a food safety side of things. But then I know you guys as farmers also adhere to very strict rules. So what is the name kind of, of that program that's managing both your animal care and cleanliness? Yeah, so uh, we uh, participate in the farm program. Uh, that's Farmers Assuring Responsible Management. Uh, that's just another layer of, of safeguard to ensure that we're handling animals properly, that our employees have been trained in proper animal care and handling. And it's, uh, you know, a, a program that has become pretty wide, widely regarded and highly regarded 
you know, the, the dairy industry is predominantly almost all milk participating in, in that program. Wow, that's awesome. Okay, Doug, I think our students have got enough information. You're ready for the next quiz. We're going to do one more quiz on the parlor. Then we're going to meet Farmer Doug back to tell him thank you and answer the last few of your questions. Do you guys take that quiz and we'll meet you right back here. All right, students. I think you guys got all those correct. I think you did great. So we are back here for our last stop with Farmer Doug before we let you guys go for the day. We have made it outside to this huge milk tank. How much milk does this store and how often is this heading off to the grocery store? Yeah, so this tank can hold up to 7,000 gallons of milk. Uh, it gets emptied out every other day. A tanker truck comes and takes milk uh, the dairy is only about half an hour away, so it could be in stores, you know, that evening. Possibly. Oh, my gosh. Okay, really, really quickly. So 7,000 gallons, right? That's right. That's right. Wow, that's a lot of gallons, students. So you guys have been asking a couple more good questions for our farmer here, one of which was a fun question. Some of the students want to know what your favorite dairy product is. Uh, I'm going to have to go with ice cream, uh, you know, Breakfast, lunch, or dinner, there's no wrong time for ice cream, I, I don't think. I would totally agree. One thing our students were asking about that they see in the grocery store is the different labels on dairy products. So between organic or conventional, can you share with us what you do and maybe what the difference is? Yeah, so we'd be considered a conventional dairy farm. Uh, organic operates under a more strict 
set of rules, I guess you'd say, where they cannot use uh, pesticides or, or some other practices that might be considered uh, on, right. a, on a conventional yeah. dairy. Uh, but, you know, it, milk is milk. I, I don't really care which one you choose. It's your preference, but uh, we're happy as, as long as it comes from a cow. <laughs> Got it. So and from what we've seen so far, it seems like both conventional and we would assume organic too are all following very specific safety practices, all the food making it in the grocery store is safe, just slightly different ways of managing the land and animals. Sure. Got it. That makes a lot of sense. Okay. One last question too from our students is, do you have a favorite cow on the farm? Uh, well, they all have personalities. Uh, there's certainly some that, that act more like pets than, uh, than domesticated cows, but. Got it. Uh, you know, some of our cows have been uh, taken to the fair, so they're pretty tame because they've been uh, worked with for months or years even. Uh, you know, right now I'd have to say uh, cow 647 is one of our top milkers. Okay. And she's also just a nice cow to work with. Uh, does her job, doesn't cause any problems. Just an easy going kind of cow. Got it. Those are the best kind. Right. Right. Okay, students. Thank you for joining us. We hope you've seen a lot of behind the scenes today, how farmer dog and farmers just like him are caring for their animals, caring for the land sustainably, and ultimately delivering a very safe, fresh, and nutritious product. Don't forget, we have one more virtual farm tour coming at you this spring, and that is tomorrow. And we'll be seeing one of uh, farmer dog's friends over in Delaware. We also have lesson plans available, and you'll be able to sign up for more virtual dairy farm tours this fall, along with seeing our whole library of tours, there's over 20 of them on our YouTube channel. Thank you so much for joining us today, and we'll catch you next time.